Quick aside, everybody, before we get into the actual content, I was accepted into the Phobies Content Affiliate Program, the content creator program, you might call it. Shout out to the Phobies team and thank you for that. But the reason I'm telling you, everybody out there, dear viewer, dear listener, is to let everybody know that I do receive some compensation from the Phobies team as a result of being part of that program. Now, I loved Phobies before and I still love Phobies now and I expect I will still continue to love Phobies in the future. So look forward to more Phobies content coming from Random's Thought. So now, on with the show. We're going to jump into the Shadow Force game. Shadow Force versus Plume. We'll see how this one goes down. We actually are back on the big house. And chat, if you're hanging out and you want to see a different game, let me know if it goes live and we'll, we'll swap over there. I'm trying to keep an eye on everything as mentioned and we'll see how it goes. We're getting a different opener from what we saw in the previous round. Shadow Force, of course, a regular up at the top of the ladder. Plume is a newcomer, as far as I know, both the Fright Knight and I don't personally recognize the name. So we'll see if we get the Dark Horse coming in hot or not. Unicorn and Cat seems like a much safer opener than the Finnegan one we saw last time. have to take care of one admin thing. Just taking care of some admin stuff on the back end, as mentioned, of course, we have to do a whole lot of things. We're getting a... So this is now the second game we've seen on this map chat where Finnegan makes an early appearance. In the previous one, it was on turn one. Here on turn two from our blue player. Is this a secret here? Is this a secret here? So Inoculus is coming out unsurprisingly. Inoculus is coming out unsurprisingly. That's kind of what you would expect. <clears throat> Just checking a couple things while we're... I'm trying to eyeball both sides of the game here. Trying to eyeball the game and do this stuff. Trying to also operate multiple tabs, chat. It's always complex trying to get this squared away. It's always... Trying to herd cats as always, chat. <laughs> trying to herd cats. So the Finnegan here, I don't know. Now, one thing that I will point out, Electric Cat often the butt of many jokes or has been for a long time. At level one, this is 420 damage. That's over half the health of this Inoculus. That's a significant amount if it can connect. Now, I'm highly going, I'm highly doubting that it will connect, but it is something to consider. It is something, in fact, to consider. This is unique thanks to, shout out to the devs, the ability for level one phobies in front of me. This is the advantage, the things that you don't typically see on ladder because, hey, maybe you're neglecting Electric Cat. Maybe you're neglecting Electric Cat.
All right. I think we are well underway. I think we have everything we need. But we do get a spider also. Yeah, I definitely need some hydrate action. I'm running out of water. Running out of water here. The Finnegan is a super secret. It's interesting because it's, like I said earlier, it's now shown up in two games. I didn't hate it in the first game. I'd have to go look. Is 950 health good for a two drop? It feels low because I have this spider sense, <laughs> lack of a better way to put it, about Unicorn being a low health phobie. And Finnegan is similarly a low health phobie. Because the same cost, same health. However, maybe it's not actually that low. I'd have to go back and check the spreadsheet to see if that's correct. So in the meantime, Shadow Force here has banked to eight keys. Only three available for our blue player. Of course, they're representing that spider threat. They do have a slot open. They can bank themselves, but I think we're... I think we're in for the boss man coming down. What do you think, Chad? What are you predicting coming out of these eight keys? There are three, only three phobies on the board for Shadow Force, but given the setup, it is fairly trivial to annihilate something. Now, given the two displacement effects from our blue player, there could be a variety of different things that are going to come down and cause a bad time. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. We, of course, have now, well... Of course, maybe isn't the way to put it, but we do have a Tickles. Tickles being all adorable. Look at that. You can't tell me Tickles is not adorable. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Tickles coming down, which is interesting, of course. Probably a reaction to this unicorn slash just wanting a one key. It allows our blue player to bank to five. They do have a panic point advantage that is rather significant now, meaning that Shadow Force either needs to claim this this turn or in very short order. It is a small map. This damage will add up very rapidly. And of course, as predicted, at least by me, probably by everybody, is the boss man himself. The big boss. The fiery boss. Now, it is in range of this spider, but at most, it's going to get pulled to here. That's not really doing a whole lot. You're not going to represent a whole lot of damage. You could boop it around, like yoink it and then boop it, but that's like, you're not getting anywhere. And I don't think you can aggressively commit as blue player here into this. Honestly, this might be the game depending on what our blue player does this turn right now. They have to make something happen immediately. If they do not, like I said, this is likely game over. The boss is going to take over. And at this point, this might be a dead spider. This is two hits from the boss, meaning you get you lose out on a little bit of damage because you can't apply fire twice but of course it'll be ultimately 900 and another 400 here that's fire this is probably a cooked spider a delicacy i'm sure i don't know exactly where although we've talked about eating all kinds of bugs on stream before it happens sometimes <laughs> In fact, I think somebody specifically was talking about eating fried tarantula before, which is fascinating to me. I feel like the... I don't know. I don't know. I have to wonder, is it the whole tarantula, like, on a stick? And then, like, you bite off the legs? And it's just, like, a corn dog, but <laughs> with, with spider? I don't know. Reminds me of the no tickles moment. <laughs> That's a callback. That's a callback. So we do get a back off, or not not quite a retreat, but it, it's it's a more defensively positioned inoculus. It could have been aggressive here. Obviously, you wouldn't want to expose it that way. But now we're getting the supplemental stabby. I think we're watching the beginning of the end for our blue player here. Although, like I said, the boss, the spider, it killed a unicorn. I don't think our blue player was 100% out of it at the time of the boss coming down, but it's it was definitely tough. Now, here's the thing. There is a line here that our blue player can win. The heart is down to 3k. This is a five panic point advantage. There is an argument that our blue player should be locking down as many panic points as they can, maybe committing a snowball or a jar 
or a Maggie or a Murder Wing, something mobile and or high range, so that that way you can pop the heart to try and close this game out. Let's check in Discord real quick. I'm getting some pings. Maybe blue guy is tilted. It's possible. Seeing a boss come down, it, it's not necessarily tilt. I would say it's demoralization. They can have similar effects, but at the end of the day, you know, like, well, boss is on the board. What do I do? And it is a skill that you have to learn as a phobies player, as a tactics player, as a strategy player, that you need to accept that sometimes your opponent's going to do stuff like this. And being in this situation frequently enough builds the resilience. You know, if you're on those ladder games where your opponent does this to you, where they way out level you, or they have some other seemingly unlosable scenario in their hands, the answer is, hey, you still have to try for it because realistically... You have to find a way to, like, you're going to be in those scenarios. Try and win the game. Game already over the boss drop. Honestly, 1,800 health on this heart. Here's the thing. I think Blue could have won this if they were able to somehow maintain this panic point. This Clinico coming in, and it could have been anything. See, they're doing it. They're going for it. With the, This is how they win. Well, it, Whether it will work is another story. But this is the out. You don't have time. This actually could be pivotal. Because now they can kill the Finnegan, reclaim this point. Um, the unit, or whatever the whatever was here, the creep, is not there to threaten. It's just one less body on the board. Um, I don't know the Droney. I mean, Droney, one, two, three, one, two, three. Like a one, one. One, two, three. One, two, three. A snowball could have made it. Would have been a little tankier, but it would have been dimensional, thereby pulling something onto the spot, onto the point. We're looking at 1,200 health. It's not an insignificant amount of panic point damage, and the answer to this boss may be play the board. Spread out. Your opponent has two slow phobies. Yes, they have a one key. If this was removed earlier in the game and Shadow Force did a great job of protecting it, maybe that is the difference. Don't get me wrong. Boss is a big problem here. It's a serious issue, and realistically, you're in a terrible spot. But at this point, it's still panic point advantage blue. This is why maybe the snowball would have been better, hypothetically. Require more hits, because it has more health. Then you lose this panic point anyway, but then the droney is available, which wouldn't be able to hit this point, so maybe it's six and one and a half dozen of the other. But only a meager 1,000 health. Only two keys left. What are you going to do? And unfortunately, the Hevo has been just beat to crap. So there's... The Hevo can't just stand there and tank a million hits to hold this point. But, like, I do not believe this game was unlosable for Shadow Force or unwinnable for Plume. I think this game was definitely on a razor's edge and we could go back and find multiple points in the game where it was simply a matter of, hey, a couple of different choices, a slight repositioning, and maybe Plume is able to take this game. Now, we'd have to really go back, since we're watching this live, really go back and examine it in detail to say, hey, no, actually, there was just no way Shadow Force was losing this because of the way the numbers work out. Because at this point, blue players out of keys, they're soon going to be out of phobies. They may not even be able to... Uh, <clears throat> they'll never reclaim a panic point advantage. But it's hard to look at 800 remaining heart health and not think, man, what if this went a little bit differently? Not even a lot differently, just a little bit. You don't need a humongous change here to push this damage. It's literally like two more turns, right? Two more turns of having a three to two panic point advantage. Because it'll be 200 on your turn, 200 on their turn, 400. 200 on your turn, 200 on their turn, 800. And change. 
because it's 235. Oh, no, excuse me. I'm thinking of ladder games. It would have been exactly 200 there. Two more turns is all that our blue player had to hold on, but well played, Shadow Force. Pulling it out with the big boss. GG. Let's jump into a Hakune game. We got a Xylo game. Somebody pointed out off stream that just the way things have worked out, we've had Xylo in the last three Fright Nights. There was another map that I can't think of what it was, but Hakune trying to do displacement things, and we have double oopsie baby. Double oopsie baby, chat. We do, in fact, get the boop. That leads to a Crushmore trying desperately to fill up that bottomless abyss. Bad news, buddy. It's not going to work out like that. But Nico Kawai has gone with the Honey Bear plan. We're looking at a 58-50 to 7k heart health advantage blue, panic point advantage blue, 10 keys remaining for each player. <laughs> Hilariously enough, we have a power down on both oopsie babies. Weird. Kind of weird. So, what do we got here? Getting a follow-up snowball. Sorry, I'm answering pings. Like I said, if you hear the sound cut out, Bobies doesn't have the ability to keep playing the sounds. At least as far as I know. I haven't found a setting to do it, to play the sounds in the background when it's not in focus. So, if you notice the sound cuts out, that's probably because, hey, I'm looking at the other monitor and I'm clicking out of it. So, we do get the yoink here on the Hevo. The Hevo is looking like it's going to pay for its sins. Crushmore, Spud, Contortio, only Razor... Wait, is this not going to die? Oh, no, not like this. Not like this. Oh, no. That is demoralizing. That is super painful because this can now walk away and get healed. It could end up here and get healed by a Clinico and it's completely safe. Or it could ultimately end up on this healing spot. It will in fact get the Clinico. A tractor still online with its yoink available. Spider yoink available. But we're going for the... Well, we're getting a hard hit. We get the block here. This is actually adorable. This locks out Honey Bear for a little while. That may be true, Jet. That may be true. Is the name Eggy? EG? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. <laughs> it's a very short one, and I feel bad not pronouncing it properly. So in the meantime, in the meantime, we're getting, at, at this point, I'll be honest, I have to give this to Akune. Like if somebody asked me right now and said, who's winning this game? And I don't think anybody would disagree. How do you say that it's not Hakune given this position? You have two yoinks, you have a boop, you have a heal, and you also have a three ranger on the stim that's not invulnerable. It has to move this turn or otherwise it gets yoinked by the spider. Now, here's the thing. Do you bait the spider here? The spider pull. Because if you leave Oopsie Baby here, the spider yoinks it, then you can counter yoink their spider, and then you're up two yoinks and a boop. Yes, you lose seven keys for five. They maintain their Oopsie Baby. But at the end of the day, you have way more displacement effects. How much does that matter? What do you think, Chad? Would you value it that way?
at this point, I'm not sure what Nico Kawhi does. Innoculus is the final phobie. One, the final phobie from our orange players, by the way, still seven keys. One, two, three, four, five, six. They still have this. Oh, no. Juiced up. Oopsie, baby. Lighten up its counterpart. Lighting up its counterpart. By the way, this might not have been powered down several turns ago. I was misinterpreting the, the bolts coming out. <laughs> because it was on the stim, that might have been the effect. But anyway. But anyway, that was a free kill. We get a block down here. Oh, by the way, get locked out, pal. Hakune is now signature move. The good boy that is Cerberus. You love to see it. You love to see it. Just clarifying some stuff in Discord real quick. You don't think Akune will make the trade? Yeah, I don't think that was worth it. I mean, obviously a better trade than what I was proposing materialized. Um, honestly, I don't know how Nico Kawhi stops the Cerberus. How do you stop the Cerberus at this stage? The spider is basically safe here. Yoink is down. You're not really going to... I mean, I guess you could dive it, hypothetically. Um, this, this, and this can hit it. This now appropriately puts it out of position of jar if our orange player wanted to go in. But we do get a muffin as the final phobie in order to heal the spider. Would there even have been enough damage? Yeah, there probably would have. This, this, and this. There, there should have been enough damage to do 950. I'm not going to count it up because clearly it's a moot point. But the Cerberus is on the march. This thing is going to end up on the stim. Well, realistically... You know what's funny? I was going to say realistically something's going to take the stim, but it can't. It can't because the attractor is live. And now the attractor can position on the lava with impunity thanks to the honey bear puke. So that means that whatever steps on the stim from our orange player, it's dead and opening up a slot for further beatdown. Further beat down. Yeah, Hakune really is the Cerberus guy lately. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Has been pushing Cerberus in non-meme fashions in a few games. In probably more games in a meme fashion. But, you know, it happens. At this point, the Kune is arguably toying with their food. There's not a whole lot that can be done by our orange player to chew through this 3k health with the phobies they have available. Certainly not without the stim. And given the yoinks and the boops available, even with the spider all the way down here... Similar to before, we're watching the beginning of the end. So let's see here. Cerberus is now officially a resident of the stim pad. That 1300 damage is going to make short work of this heart. Ah, uh, even the body block for <laughs> body block for the Evo 2.0. There's just what do you do? What do you do as Nico Kawhi? You you probably just die. Is the answer? You probably just die. Presenting multiple threats here, multiple threats being a threat directly to the heart as well as a panic point threat. Four to one panic point advantage. No matter what decision Nico Kawhi chooses, it's Sophie's choice. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. We'll just kind of let this one play out, chat. <laughs> We're going to let this one play out. I don't think there's a whole lot more to add. 
just double checking to see if we got any other results. I will have to do some admin stuff shortly in order to try and get that stuff going. If you're noticing a little bit of stuttering, I am seeing some FPS drops when I switch between Discord and back again, so sorry. <laughs> it just, uh... Ooh, we're actually getting all the damage going into Cerberus. Still 140 health. Hilariously, will not die to the fire. Oh my god. Beat down, going down on the heart. Six hits minimum, really seven with the Gravedigger. Because you get two here, two here, two here, and the Gravedigger. Not much that our orange player can do. A valiant effort, but Cerberus takes the day. GG. Well played. Let's jump into a smiley game. Another resident commonly at the top of the ladder. Oh my god. Chat, will you look at this board position? What? Oh boy, all right. I need a second to uh, internalize this, chat. This is... We got Heartbreaker, Spider, Yeti, Hevo 2.0, and Friends, versus Octonauti, Akira 2.0, and Spider. Good lord. That is a hell of a lineup. That's a lineup. Now, the clock is ticking in this round, as mentioned earlier. Well, I posted it in Discord that there was over 15 minutes. We're now down to about 12 and a half minutes in the round. I'll let players know in another two minutes or so. Let them know that there's 10 minutes. It's entirely possible that this one ends up being a draw uh, because we're not necessarily going to have a definitive winner. That's something that is written into the Fright Night rules. If we run out of time, you run out of time. We do get the Clopster going in aggressively, though. This... Smiley's not interested in a draw. This is, in fact, looking like they want to end this game. 4-1 to one panic point advantage. 1,930 health left on this heart. If our blue player wanted to try and make a draw happen, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Obviously, nobody's happy with a draw, but they're going to try and push for the win. I am not sure how they get out of this. Akira is live. Although, given that our orange player is clustered around this abyss. Alright, going for the Akira Yoink. With the undo, that chews up a lot of time in the turn, so we'll have to see how this does. There is a boop option available here. I truthfully don't hate that. So you could Yoink. You could boop this into the abyss while damaging the heart. Really an Akira? <laughs> Chad, are you surprised that that's going to show up? If you have it, Akira is arguably the best phobie in the game. All those people out there, myself included, that thought a tractor was bad, like, not as in it is a bad phobie, don't use it, it is incredibly powerful. There you go. <laughs> so, they should have just banned Xylo? I mean, they... Adrophobia may not have known that Smiley had access to this. Of course, you could check your opponent. Uh, check their stress levels. Um, but it may not have entered their mind. It may not have been something they were concerned with, truthfully. Uh, not that they shouldn't be concerned with it, but just like, oh, it didn't occur to me that there was an Akira available. Or maybe they valued getting rid of some of the other maps. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and check the bracket to see who is banning, who is choosing maps. Uh, but if you are an Akira owner, you probably need to get rid of, like, you want to pick these maps. These are, I'm picking Xylo. I'm picking any Abyss map because I will make your life miserable. Now, at this point, 1,330 health on the heart. The Clopster's not even dead. This is ball game. Unless Adrophobia has, like, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what they would pull out at this stage. I need more water, chat. I need more water. Panic point swapping, but again, I mean, this is basically enough damage on its own, not counting the Hevo, not counting whatever. 
The beginning of the end, if you will. I gotta come up with some other sayings to, re to say basically the same thing. GG. Do in fact that we're it apparently round two is Xylo round. So we have Happy Chappy here up against Evan. Evan pushing in with a panic point advantage and a tractor on the board. There is a yoink that we're seeing go down real quick here. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, Big She. If you don't like Akira and showing up, yeah, I can't blame anybody for, for using it. We haven't seen enough of Akira in general to... I don't think it's fair to say that it is, like, unbeatable. Clearly, it's not unbeatable. The real question is, how reasonable is it to beat it? Uh, and I don't know that we have enough data to really make that assertion one way or the other. So we're getting a good yoink here. It eliminates the jar, opens up the bow mangles for a little bit of beatdown from a variety of things, plus a contortio that can occupy the stem. Doesn't even need the stem at this point. But it does, in fact. Dropping the hammer. I don't really know what that gravedigger is doing. Honestly, I think you go in with the gravedigger. There, there's just no way for our orange player to come back from this. Zero keys to zero keys. Four to two phobie advantage. Even if you threw away two of the phobies, one of your remaining phobies is a fully healthy pterodactyl. If anything walks in range, the game is over. So I think, yes, you just pulverize the heart. If they waste time attacking the Gravedigger, you can still just go for it. You can ultimately just get there and probably be fine. So chat, as always, I will be sending out a survey after Fright Night to get players feedback, see what ways we can continue to improve. I anticipate Fright Night number six will have a modified format from what we're doing today so that that way we can explore other options. We'll have to see if it turns out that everybody loved this compared to other events, then maybe we just stick with it. And that's ultimately what we do. Uh, but at the end of the day, we'll have to play it by ear. If you are ju just just... And don't take that negatively. If you're just a spectator, feel free to participate in the survey because whether you chose not to play because of certain rules or you chose not to play because of the timing or you chose not to play because of the time constraints or whatever the reason, I want to know about those to help improve turnout and player satisfaction as we go forward. So we're just getting the beat down on the heart. We've seen some pretty decisive Xylo games. Seen some pretty decisive Xylo games so far. Oop. Double checking the timer here. Just letting everybody know we got five minutes. Ball game. <laughs> 